hello everyone and uh, welcome to uh, today's webinar uncovering the european ai ecosystem insights into uh, more than 5000 uh, startups uh, first of all we are going to present uh, ourselves uh, my name is uh, tatiana and uh, i am a senior entrepreneurship researcher at uh, scopai and my name is mahmoud and i'm an innovation analyst at scopai uh, this webinar is based uh, on the study that has been uh, conducted uh, at the beginning of uh, that year and uh, which is called Mapping of Artificial uh, Intelligence Startups in Europe. Uh, this is the study that uh, is based on uh, the data available uh, in SCAPI platform. And as you can see, um, we have um, it is based on more than 5,000 uh, artificial intelligence startups in Europe. And uh, in this webinar, we will have two parts. In the first part, I will present the content of the study uh, that was created based, uh, based on the data uh, collected on the platform. And uh, in the second part, uh, Mahmoud will uh, present uh, the platform and uh, more in a more practical way of how uh, of how the, the data can be used to, to create um, uh, the reports and different uh, graphs, uh, and it can be applied not only to that topic, but uh, to any other topic, so any other domain uh, and uh, geography. Um, this webinar will last about uh, 40 minutes. And first, I will start with um, uh, talking about the growing uh, artificial intelligence market. I will present a methodology of mapping and uh, will show the main results, uh, which give uh, a 360 degrees view of the uh, European AI startup ecosystem. And uh, then uh, Mahmoud will uh, present uh, ecosystem mapping uh, using Scopi platform. And at the end, we uh, will have some time to answer to, to your questions. You can always ask the questions uh, anytime during uh, the webinar by uh, writing them, uh, and uh, we will receive it and will answer to, to, to your question at the, end, uh, at the end of the webinar. Uh, we will also send to you uh, the slides, so the slides that you will uh, see during the webinar, um, after, uh, after the webinar. Uh, so let's start uh, with the first part and uh, the growing artificial intelligence market. Artificial intelligence as a term uh, broadly uh, refers to uh, the development of computer systems that are able to perform uh, tasks which normally require human intelligence. Nowadays, there are many examples of uh, AI technologies in uh, different industries in finance, security, medical industry, uh, transportation, uh, smart cities, energy, and so on. And uh, these technologies um, allow uh, generating significant social and economic benefits uh, and change or disrupt many industries. Um, Artificial intelligence solutions uh, are becoming uh, nowadays more and more used in uh, analyzing data. And here we talk about the big amount of data or big data. And to propose based on that analysis, uh, the patterns and uh, to help or to assist, uh, to assist uh, in, in, decision, uh, in decision making. Uh, if we look at uh, the UA, uh, the global AI market, we can see that uh, it's, uh, there is a steady uh, increase in, uh, in AI investments uh, worldwide. Uh, for example, the market was estimated at, uh, in, in 2022 at um, about uh, $120 billion, and uh, by 2030, it is expected uh, to grow to uh, more than $1,500 billion at a growth rate of uh, 38%. And uh, because of that uh, positive dynamics of the market, uh, we can see that AI is uh, currently attracting attention of uh, many entrepreneurs and many investors who are seeking to, 
invest to that companies um, and to and to receive returns on the investment. Uh, and also uh, the national governments, European Union and national governments are uh, developing uh, initiatives uh, to, um, to advance uh, and to make uh, to, 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 to further develop uh, this sector. Uh, now let's move to uh, the methodology of mapping. Uh, in order to understand uh, uh, the landscape, so the, the ecosystem, the AI startup ecosystem in Europe. Uh, we have collected the data from uh, Scopi platform uh, using uh, the following criteria. Uh, first of all, we selected companies that are uh, located uh, in Europe, so they have uh, headquarters in Europe. Uh, we have uh, selected companies that are related to uh, artificial intelligence, and for that uh, we selected uh, the tasks such as uh, AI, uh, data science, machine learning, uh, deep learning, computer vision, NLP, image processing, uh, sentiment analysis. Uh, we looked at uh, the companies that uh, were created um, after 2013 or uh, over the last uh, 10 years and those that employ less than 500 employees. Uh, using this criteria, uh, we have found more than 5,000 startups, uh, AI startups in Europe, uh, that were presented in the platform. And on the right uh, part of the slide, you can see a QR code uh, that uh, you can use to access uh, to the platform and to access to the list of uh, all these uh, 5,000 startups and um, to look through them, but also to be able to click on every startup and to find more information on them. Um, after selecting uh, this um, the landscape, uh, the data on startups uh, is uh, collected from uh, sources that are publicly available on the internet, uh, such as, for example, uh, the website, social media, uh, social media accounts uh, of um, of startups, but also databases, for example, pattern database. And it is collected uh, automatically using uh, data science and AI algorithms. Uh, now let's uh, move to the results, um, to the results and um, uh, to, the, to the analysis of uh, AI startup ecosystem. Uh, so we can see uh, here the panoramic view of um, of the startups, and uh, globally, uh, the analyzed startups are distributed across uh, 35 countries, and we have uh, uh, the countries uh, with the most uh, represented startups in our analysis in our landscape. Uh, they include uh, France, uh, United Kingdom, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Spain, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Sweden, Belgium, uh, Finland, Denmark, and Italy. And overall, we can see a rather broad coverage, uh, broad coverage of uh, European countries, with uh, with uh, 35 different countries presented uh, presented in the landscape. Uh, we have also identified uh, the thematic clusters of startups, and here you can see uh, the network of, uh, of tags, which gives an idea of what kind of companies are in the landscapes. Uh, we were able to identify four different uh, clusters. Uh, the first one, uh, presented in green, uh, we can call it marketing, retail, or human uh, resource cluster, because uh, we can see uh, such tags as um, uh, as uh, MarTech, customer management, uh, job tech, HR tech, for example. The second cluster, uh, the yellow one, uh, we call it uh, healthcare cluster because uh, there is uh, all the companies related to, to health, uh, health tech, uh, diagnosis, uh, biotech, uh, DNI, and so on. Uh, the next cluster, the blue one, um, can be called as finance and security cluster. Uh, we can see there are companies that are uh, working on a cloud solution, for example, cloud tech, cybersecurity, compliance, fintech, investment. And the last cluster uh, of companies, the red one, um, uh, combines uh, the different industrial solutions. And here we can see 
um, for example, electronics, industry 4.0, um, 4 uh, car tech or automotive industry, smart city, arc tech, uh, energy tech. So this allows us to give uh, an overview of uh, of the companies in uh, in the landscape of AI uh, startup ecosystem. Um, moving to the maturity of companies, uh, we can see that uh, most of startups, 64%, uh, are on the go-to-market stage. Uh, there is also uh, about one third of startups uh, that are early stage companies and uh, are developing their product without yet selling it on the market. Uh, we found that more than uh, 1,700 uh, startups were created uh, over the last uh, three years. And you can see an example of uh, some examples of startups that were created, um, uh, that, that, uh, that have been recently created. Uh, in terms of size, uh, team size, uh, we see that uh, most startups are small and uh, have less than uh, 10 employees, 60% uh, of uh, companies. Uh, we have about uh, one third uh, of the sample that has that are larger uh, startups uh, with uh, between 11 and 15 employees, and 9% um, uh, up to 500 employees. Um, with regard to business model, uh, most of startups, 93%, um, it's a large number of startups, are B2B, uh, uh, B2B companies. So they provide uh, solutions to, uh, to businesses. Uh, we have uh, uh, much fewer uh, startups that provide solutions to, uh, to individuals and, uh, and to the government. Uh, the two uh, dominant uh, business models are development and manufacturing and uh, research development and uh, innovation services, which represent uh, 45 and 44 percent of, uh, of startups uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, there are also other models like software, uh, software as a service, uh, subscription. Mm, the data also allowed us to uh, map startups according to application of uh, AI technologies. And here you can see um, the different uh, types of applications uh, in the descending order with, uh, with examples of um, startups on the, on the right side. Uh, for example, the dominant one uh, include uh, marketing and retail, uh, healthcare, finance, uh, human resources, uh, but also security, robotics, uh, education, uh, automotive sector, industrial sector, and uh, agriculture. This is uh, where the startups in which uh, sectors uh, startups operate that, uh, uh, and apply AI technology. Uh, with regard to technology and patents, uh, we found that um, 492 startups, which is uh, about 10% uh, of the total, uh, total sample, have um, registered patents. And in total, uh, we found 1,451 uh, patents, uh, which gives a, about three patents on average per startup. And on the right side, uh, you can see a graph which, depict, uh, which uh, shows uh, the number of patents per uh, different TI applications. And we can see that most patents uh, go, um, uh, are registered by startups that operate in healthcare sector, uh, but also in marketing and retail, uh, automotive security, and, uh, and robotics. Uh, with regard to fundraising, um, uh, the total funding, uh, the total funding over the last uh, five years, so from 2018 to 2022, uh, is about 23 billion uh, euros, and you can see a positive trend uh, over the years, uh, with more than seven billion raised uh, raised in 2022. Uh, in terms of countries. Uh, we found that the United Kingdom startups from the United Kingdom uh, raised uh, most, uh, mo uh, the most money. Uh, then then uh, goes uh, France, uh, but also Germany, Ireland, Switzerland, uh, Sweden. And uh, for the um, level 
of the, the funding round, um, we can see that Series A uh, demonate, uh, but also precede and uh, seed, which reflects uh, early stage uh, early stage companies that um, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that also a big part of uh, of uh, represents a big part of startups in the landscape. We have a fewer startups that praise Series B, uh, Series C, and uh, Series D to F. Um, uh, here you can see different uh, so the examples of uh, the logos of uh, startups that uh, receive different amount of, uh, of uh, funding from more than uh, 100 million uh, to less than uh, to less than um, uh, to less than five million. And this is also uh, the information that is um, available in the platform to to classify uh, startups according to the amount of money they raised. And uh, lastly, to finish, uh, to finish with the report, uh, uh, we um, uh, report also the readiness levels of AI startups. Uh, the readiness levels, uh, technology investment and market readiness levels. Uh, each startup is automatically evaluated uh, for each uh, for each of uh, technology investment and market uh, readiness level on the scale from nine um, to one. So the one is uh, the lowest and nine is the highest level of uh, readiness level. And uh, for um, for AI startup in particular, we can uh, see that uh, they have higher higher level uh, of technology readiness. Uh, followed by investment readiness and uh, finally the, um, the market readiness levels. And uh, now, uh, so we, ha we have seen the first part of uh, mostly related to the content of the report. And um, I will uh, note that uh, this report, uh, so AI is uh, one example uh, of the topic, but with uh, with a platform, uh, different uh, different sectors, different industries can be analyzed. And uh, currently, I will give uh, the floor to Mahmoud, who will um, show to you uh, how to how how this report will, was created with the use of uh, Scopy platform. Thank you very much, Tatiana, for your interesting presentation, and thank you very much for the very useful insights you brought with your report and uh, during the presentation. So as Tatiana mentioned, I'll be going through the platform. I'll show you how to navigate through the Scopy platform, and I'll show you how to make the best use out of the platform so that you get the most uh, relevant results and narrowed down uh, results as, uh, as you may need, depending on your criteria. But first, let's start with uh, a quick definition on, uh, on, on Scopy. So what is Scopy? So Scopy is a fully automated business and technology intelligence platform providing information on startups, scale-ups, and innovative companies worldwide. It is mainly used by large corporations, so R&D departments and innovation departments. Uh, it is also used by banks, investment funds, institutions, and public organizations. So now I'll go directly to the platform so that I can show you uh, start to show you how to how to start exploring our platform and how to uh, how can you start exploring our platform and how can you uh, make the best uh, use and to uh, to get uh, to apply filters so that you can get the most relevant criteria to uh, or the most relevant result to your criteria. So of course this is the home page of the Scopy platform and this is where uh, as soon as you log in using your Scopy credentials. You, this is where you see the first thing when you log in. So as you see on the top of the screen, you have the search bar here, and this is where you can start customizing any uh, search. You can uh, use keywords, you can use phrases, you can use one of our tags. We currently have uh, about 350 tags uh, that are automatically attached by our AI tool, Alfred, to the startups added to the, to the, to the database so that we can identify them later. So as an example, as we're speaking about the artificial intelligence startups in Europe, uh, and also as Tatiana mentioned, this, is, uh, this could be applied to any industry, any sector, any market, any technology. Uh, so I'm just taking this as an example, but this also could be applied to anything. So I'll be using AI 
So when I start typing on our search bar in here, it starts, it starts suggesting the, well, how do you want to search about this keyword? So it's, if, it, if we have a tag with this, uh, with this keyword, it will appear here, it will suggest, suggest it. If not, it, you can search as a keyword or you can write uh, a phrase or uh, if there's an entity that exists with the same name, it will also suggest it. And it would suggest you a lot of other things that are relevant to what you're looking for. But for the moment, we're looking for the AI tag. So I'll pick the tag. So as soon as you pick, you start uh, searching about any of the, any uh, tags, it would start showing the results of the startups that has this tag attached. So currently, as this is a very broad, could be a very broad tag, as AI could be applied to so many industries. <laughs> so currently, as you see, we have uh, more than 10,000 uh, results, which could be too broad and could be too uh, general. And you might want to get more uh, specific with the, with the search so that you get more relevant results. So let's say we're concerned with the startups that has the AI, AI tag attached and uh, that operates in the health uh, tech industry. So I would pick, I combine AI tag with the health tech tag. This why we get uh, significantly less results. We get 1,900 after having uh, 1, 000, uh, more than 10,000 results with only the AI tag. Uh, so this is how you can start uh, narrowing down. As I said, you can always use this search bar. You can combine any filters. You can write any filters to combine. And you also have this uh, option where you can have them all. So all the startups in the database that has the AI tag and the health tech tag and any other criteria you might want. Or there is also the option to have any. So any startup in our database that has this tag or this tag basically. But as we want to narrow down the search now, I would combine both. So I would go this way. As I said, uh, there are multiple uh, pre-made filters where you can also apply to, the, to your search so that you get it more narrowed down. So let's say uh, you're looking for these, the startups that operate in AI and health tech. And this is uh, where the, you can also apply some other filters. So here you can pick your landscape. If you have a landscape, you would be uh, you would always find it here. And this is where I'll be accessing uh, the landscape that was used uh, that Tatiana used in building the report. Uh, and here you can also filter by labels. If you have, as you always have the ability to add a label to any startup in our database, you can always add some labels and then filter back with these labels so that you directly get your results. You can also pick tags from here. As I mentioned, you can do that from here on the filter uh, on the filter bar or in the search bar. You can always also filter by location. I personally see this very interesting as it uh, as it provides you the option to filter by uh, continent. Uh, you can always also filter by countries or for some specific countries, you have the ability to filter by regions or even by departments. But for the moment, I'll take Europe as an example as we're speaking about the European startups. So I will filter down to the European startups that has AI tag and health tech tag attached. So this goes also less than half uh, from 1,900 approximately to 840 startups. This way you get more narrowed down with the search and this should be closer to the, or more relevant to our criteria. Uh, let's apply some more filters to get this more narrowed down. This could be a lot of a lot of startups, so you wouldn't you might not want to look for look uh, in 800 startups that might be too general. So let's say we're concerned with the B2B startups, the startups that has a business model of uh, B2B business to business. So this brings the results a little bit more down. And let's say you can also apply with maturity stage. We have in the lab early stage, go to market mature scale unicorn closed and acquired startups. And if you hover over this information icon, you always have the definitions of, the, of each of these stages. So let's say we're concerned with the mature startups. We're not concerned with the in the lab or early stage. This brings the results uh, uh, a lot less to 70. And we also have the ability to, uh, to filter by founding date or the fundraising amounts. So uh, this is how you can start navigating through the platform and this is how you can uh, start applying filters so that you can reach your criteria or the 
the the the the the, the results that you would like to have instead and the more you and as i said like the more you can always keep uh filtering so that you get you get more relevant results so that you don't get a lot of uh noise or m many startups that would uh, would be consume time consuming to check all of them so you can keep doing this until you reach your criteria so that was the first part and this is why this is uh this is uh was this was to show you how to to navigate through our platform now i'll go to the landscape that tatiana used in building her report which is uh which is the artificial intelligence startups in europe so basically the landscape is is, is very similar to the to a search query that we just performed but it's uh, but it's done by the scopi uh, analysts so basically uh, as we see here as tatiana mentioned in her report we have 5604 results this number usually as we say our landscapes are not uh, 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 it, it's it's never uh, static it's usually a dynamic thing or an evolving process so at the beginning it goes this way and then uh, the more our AI tool detects startups that are relevant to the criteria that was used in building this landscape, it adds it to the landscape. And this is how our landscapes grow by time, basically. So similar to the search query that we've just performed, we have the ability to uh, perform more filters so that, you, uh, so that you get more relevant results or more narrowed down search. But we also have, and we also have the, these different views where you can, as you see on the right side of the screen, we have these views where you can view differently your landscape, Dep depends on what information you would like to have. So this is the most basic view, which is the, the list view. And as you, say, as you see, it shows the startups as a list, basically, and it shows some uh, basic information about each of the startups. So startup name, uh, logo, uh, head headquarters, uh, the, the country of their headquarters, uh, founding date, uh, uh, maturity stage, and their uh, short description and the recent event that took place. Another similar uh, view is the card view. This is very similar to the list view. It all depends on the criteria or, or the, the preference of the user. This is just a different way to view the, the card of the startups. So another very interesting view and very useful one, I would say, is uh, the map view and this view actually allows you to show the, the geographic distribution of uh, the startups within your landscape so as you see here this is how you can see how many startups per country and the interesting thing about this view is that it's actually an interactive view so the more you zoom in or out the more uh, uh, precise location you get or general one if you zoom out of course um, another uh, interesting view is the table view. This is uh, pretty much similar to the list view, but it uh, allows, it gives some flexibility to the user. So it looks very much like an Excel table, as you can see, with rows, with the, with the startups and columns information about them. The interesting and different thing about this uh, view is that you have this settings icon, and this is how you can customize your uh, table so that you see only relevant information if you don't want to see everything about the startup. So let's say as an example, we have this column, private labels, that is empty. I might want to remove it. So I would go to settings uh, tab. I would just remove the labels. And you also have the ability to add any other columns according to the, the relevant information to you. So let's say I would use the team size. So I would remove the, the, the labels column and I'll add the team size column. And this way we apply, this way we get a new column with the size of each of the startup's uh, teams and the labels uh, column is removed. And this is also uh, another interesting option here is that you can select all the startups or you can select some of them and then you export and this way you get uh, uh, this table as customized as you want. You get it uh, in an Excel file if you export it from here. Uh, another uh, useful and interesting uh, view is the events view. And this is where you can view the events of your that took place within your, the startups in your landscape. 
So uh, simply here, you have the ability to show the recent events. Instead of going through the, each of the, as we say that the landscapes are an ongoing process or evolving process, we, uh, you might connect today, and if you don't connect for a week, when you come back without uh, the need to go to each, uh, each startup in your landscape to, make, to, sh to see if there are new information about each. So here you can go to the events view, you filter by the latest events, and this way you get the events that took place recently or by the recent ones. And as you can see here, you get the information about the event. This is the startup name and the, when the event took place and the amount of the event. This is a fundraising event, as an example. Uh, so and you, it's, you also have the ability to filter by any kind of event, whatever concerns you. So fundraising, if you, if you are only concerned with the fundraising events, you have the ability to filter by fundraising events. And this is uh, the amount of events or, or the results that you get. You have the ability to filter by partnerships, patents, grants, exits, whatever, like any uh, criteria that you might, or any events that you might be interested to see. So a final view and a very useful one, as it shows an overall view of the landscape. It doesn't only, uh, it, it doesn't show uh, information about each of the startups, but it rather shows an over, overall view of the whole landscape and uh, of all the information within uh, the, of all the startups within the landscape at once. So as an example, this, is, this looks very much similar to a dashboard where you can just uh, get in to have uh, an overall view. So this is an example of the charts that are pre-made. So world cloud representing the importance of tags. So as we see, like the so this is, these are the tags that are or most of the tags that are attached to the startups in the landscape. And as we see, the most dominant is AI, of course, because this is uh, an AI-based uh, landscape. And uh, as you see, uh, it's uh, all these tags are interactive, as I mentioned. So if you press, as we say, like the the bigger the the tag is, the more it represents startups within the landscape. So as we see here. Uh, we see that data science and machine learning are very dominant. And if you hover over this, you get this information, how many startups does it appear at and uh, how many uh, and how and the percentage it is representative in the startups. So another example, so a distribution of startups by the country of headquarters. And I believe this chart was used by Tatiana in her report. Uh, it's similar. You can get an information about where your startups are distributed and you can look, and as I mentioned also, all our charts are uh, interactive. So as Tatiana mentioned during her presentation, the most dominant startups or the most of the startups are in, the, uh, in France, uh, representing 29%, followed by the UK and then Germany and so on. And this is a sample of the charts that were used in the report by Tatiana. Another uh, pre-made uh, chart is the distribution of startups by their business model, as also was mentioned. And this also this chart was also used in the report. So uh, the B2B startups are the most dominant and followed by the B2C and B2G and so on. Uh, that's another example of the, of the charts, distribution of startups by their maturity. So as we see here in the lab is the least uh, early stage a bit more and the most dominant is the go-to-market startup representing as you can see 63.5. Uh, you always have the ability here as we say that this is a customizable thing and, and as we try to cover all the needs of any user that, uh, that uses Copai so we always say that this is uh, we have these uh, pre-made charts for you but you always have the ability to uh, remove to actually uh, customize this how how to customize your dashboard you have the ability to delete any of the charts if you think it's irrelevant you have the ability to edit a chart and you have the ability also to download it so you can download the chart as a png or you can download the chart as a json and this way you can convert it uh, to excel and to create to get only the information that that was used in building this chart and then you can create your own chart in excel or any other tool in case you haven't found, if in case you there is a specific information that you would like to find and you couldn't find it here in the pre-made charts, you always have the ability to add a chart actually. There are these charts also that suggestions that you can directly press and it creates the chart for you. 
there is also if you couldn't find and if you couldn't find any of the the chart that you're concerned with in any of these suggestions you always have the ability to customize your own chart so all you need to do is to give a chart title pick an x axis i would go with country and then you pick a y axis i would go with number of startups and this way, way you create your own chart up, which shows the number of startups per each country uh, there is also this flexibility that you can uh, create this chart as a bar chart. You can also make it a pie chart or multiple other suggestions. Uh, there is also the option to create the z-axis. Let's say I would create the stage. I would do the stage. So this way you see the number of startups per country per each of their stages. And this way you can always save the chart. And whenever you come back to your analytics view, you see this chart uh, done for you and as i mentioned you also have always the ability to delete the chart and this way we try to make it as customizable as possible and as easy and friendly to use uh, the scopi platform uh, so yeah so this is how you can of course there are multi a lot more uh, features and tools but like i wouldn't be able to go through all because of the time limitation but if you have any questions please uh, do not hesitate to get in touch with any of us. And this was to show you, so we've covered the exploration of the platform, and this was to show you the landscape that was used in building the report. So to get back to the slides, uh, of course, the website is www.scopi.com. If you would like to have a free trial, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. We'd be very happy to assist you. And if you would like to have a private demo, of course, you can do that through the website. You can book a demo through our website. And if you would like to know more about our the blog, the blogs that that uh, that we post at Scopai, and if you would like to know more about the useful insights that we bring, of course, we have our blog page in our website where you can see all the blogs and reports that are done by Scopai. And here is also the barcode that that's where you can actually access all the list, uh, the full list of the startups that I've been showing that was used in the artificial intelligence startups in Europe that was used in the uh, report made by Tatiana. And if you have any questions, it's time to ask. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Mahmoud, for the demonstration of how uh, um how the data can be used and the graphs uh, to create uh, to create different kind of reports and uh, yeah now while uh, waiting for the first uh, questions uh, i will just uh, remind that you can uh, write your questions in uh, in, in go to webinar platform and uh, send so that uh, so that we receive it and uh, answer them uh, the um, the landscape that uh, was shown in the platform um, so once you go to uh, if you use the QR code to access uh, to access the platform you can see uh, uh, all, all these startups and you can uh, see and play yourself with the platform uh, do everything that Mahmoud uh, has been shown during uh, during the demonstration so uh, all these features are accessible uh, uh, for free if you use the, the QR code Yeah, so this is uh, this is uh, the QR code and uh, uh, which give access to this uh, landscape with five thousand startups, including the analytics, uh, including the graphs, including uh, uh, including all different views. And we have uh, uh, we have the question: uh, How many uh, startups do you have in your database? So, in total, um, as I mentioned, the database covers uh, startups worldwide and uh, any industries. So, not only Europe and not only AI, of course, but uh, all industries and worldwide. And uh, currently, we have about uh, 160,000. 160,000 startups in the database, uh, but this is expected to, to, to grow to uh, 300,000 by the end of the year. So we've got another question. So uh, how many, uh, what other uh, products do Scopi provide? 
So uh, we have three main products, as we mentioned, that we have the database access, and this is where you can access all the, 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 the startups that we have in our database. As Tatiana mentioned, we have uh, currently 160,000 startups expected to reach 300 by the end of this year. So this is the first product. You can have access to the database where you can perform, uh, perform any search query, and then uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you can create your own landscapes, basically, or prefer, perform any search query. We have the other, uh, another uh, main uh, product is the landscape. So basically, it's uh, similar to a search query, but it's done uh, through our back office by our analyst team. So what happens here is that you give our team the criteria that you would like to build this landscape upon, and then uh, we build it for you and we deliver it with uh, and with the landscapes, we guarantee the exhaustivity of information and uh, the full list of startups that operates in this uh, in the industry or technology you're looking at. And our third uh, product is the DTI or the Deep Tech Insights, and this is a lot of uh, uh, a lot deeper uh, research that is made per startup. So uh, if you are interested in one specific startup and you would like to know more about it. We have the ability to uh, to perform a lot deeper research, so you get a lot more, like about six, seven more times the information that you get in the normal startups that you have in your database. And this is performed also. We trigger our AI tool to look for information, and it's also uh, uh, revised by our analyst team, myself included. And uh, we also guarantee that we have all the information about this startup since its creation until today. So these are the three main uh, products that we have currently in Scopi. Mm, another question we received. Um, uh, thank you for your presentation. I understand uh, you are based in France and have an increased number of startups registered from, uh, from them. Uh, were you able to normalize uh, your data to avoid bias? So this is a very interesting uh, question, so, and I would say uh, the relevant one. Uh, indeed, as you have seen in, um, in the statistics or starting from distribution of startups by countries, uh, we have seen uh, that uh, France has more startups, uh, more or less the same level with UK startups that we have in the landscape. Uh, this is uh, on one part, our platform uh, more uh, covers France and French startups uh, very well. Also, European startups it covers well. Uh, the other countries, although it, 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 it covers like worldwide, but the um, uh, so the coverage in in countries, of course, uh, deep, uh, of course, uh, differs. Uh, for uh, for that report, uh, we acknowledge this uh, bias, so I would say a limitation, and we uh, like expl explicitly write that this uh, European the, rep the um, landscape on startups in Europe with a particular focus on uh, French startups. So to uh, to make uh, to make uh, this note is uh, one of the limitations of uh, of the data, of course. Uh, in terms of normalization, uh, uh, for that report, we didn't explicitly normalize that for, uh, for several, uh, for most, uh, most of the reason is that for, um, for doing like a proper normalization, you need to know like the real number of startups in, uh, in countries, which is uh, extremely difficult to, to know because uh, uh, normally there is a database that exists, uh, but they cover mostly uh, the SMEs uh, rather, rather than startups. And we are focusing on technological startups. And it is hard to know the, the exact number of uh, of startups in uh, in each country, so to do a proper normalization. Uh, that's why we opt for uh, uh, acknowledgement this um, uh, that 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 our landscape uh, that our landscape has a particular focus on on French startups. So another question, maybe uh, a last one before we end. Uh, so we get a question on how uh, how do we make sure that the information is correct in the platform. So as mentioned, as Tatiana mentioned at the beginning of her presentation, so we have our uh, the the sources. We have the main sources that we crawl our our AI tool crawls the web. So we have the information that is all on public databases and sometimes the private ones as well. Like newsletters, like uh, like uh, of course the website of the of the of the startups, 
and uh, social media accounts and so on. So in our in our platform, when when you access a startup, when you go to the at a glance view, you have beside the information, you have this source icon where you can press actually to see the source and to get more deep information about each of the sources. So about about each of the information. So this is how you can trust this information, and this is how you can uh, make sure that the information is correct uh, in our platform. Uh, and one more question we have just received. Um, how did you tag the startups? Uh, was it automatically done? Uh, did the startups have the chance to accept, review it? So um, the tags, uh, so the list of tags, we have uh, 300, uh, about 350 different tags. Uh, startups are tagged automatically. So we have uh, a machine learning uh, model for uh, for every tag that assigns the tag to to the startup based on information that that uh, that AI receives on 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 startups. For example, based on information on its website, it understands that uh, this startup uh, is a health tech, for example. Uh, so for that, uh, for that it's uh, automatic, and the, the models have been created. Of course, in order to create the model, uh, the expert um, uh, the uh, the expert validation has been made, so that uh, that the identification is correct. Um, did the startup have a chance to accept review it? Uh, so we um, one of the like uh, one, one of the value or one of the uh, of uh, of Scopi is that we provide like uh, objective uh, objective information that is collected from public sources. So um, the startups do not um, add information about well about uh, the founders, for example, do not add information about uh, about their comp or companies so that uh, to avoid also a kind of a biases that some startups have more information than others because uh, their founders edit more information than for example uh, for other startups uh, in this way for all startups we use uh, the information available uh, available on the internet um, yeah i hope to to have answered your questions If there is no more questions, I think uh, we are on time to to finish this webinar, and we would like to thank you uh, again for uh, for your presence and for uh, your discussions, the questions that you have asked. Uh, I will remind that we will send uh, to you the slides uh, after that webinar, uh, and uh, yeah, you are welcome to to attend our future webinars on uh, different uh, topics. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you have any other questions or if you would like to get any uh, detailed information about the Scopi platform, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. We'd be very happy to assist you. Thank you very much. Thank you and have a nice day.